punch. So he's giving him some lateral movement, and he's keeping Vincent Gray a good pot shot. A little bit of Santos. Catch him coming in. And you got a tall guy like Johnson moving like this. It reminds me a little bit of, you know, seeing kids on top of a hill and they're throwing things at a kid that's trying to get up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the guy on top of the hill, he's going to get the bet of it. Right. Because the guy at the bottom of the hill, he's got to take a lot of those things being thrown at him before he can get up there. And that's kind of the case for Santos. He's got to take a lot of what's thrown at him before he can get up that hill to Johnson. You see even there where he was able to step in and calmly land a jab. You know, it just comes off effortlessly off his right shoulder. Oh, it's that amateur experience where he's been in the ring, where he's calm, he's confident. And again, it's 2004 Olympics for Johnson won the silver medal. So he has, he knows he's been in with an elite class of fighter where he has that kind of confidence to be calm and to pick his spots. And again, he has the right opponent. A guy who knows how to survive, but a guy who's slow, who's predictable, and who's right in front of him. Teddy, what did you think of Johnson when you were watching him in the Olympic Games? I didn't think of him as the best of the best. I thought of him as a guy who's going to make a good pro if he gets the opportunity to leave that communist country and actually turn pro. I thought he had a great size, great body, but he didn't do one thing that made me say, wow. Mm -hmm. Rigandau did something that made me say, wow. Mm -hmm. And twice winning Olympic gold, in addition to world championship wins as well. Santos rocked there, took a shot to the head. Again, you see the concentration of Johnson. Once he caught Santos with that counter shot, now he's gonna open up a little bit. Final seconds, though. Santos looking to survive the final seconds of round number three. It looks like he's done it. A special edition of Friday Night Fights live in Miami Beach. Brian Kenny, Teddy Atlas. And let's took a, take a look at some of the Olympic all-timers. Again, Laszlo Papp of Hungary in the 50s. Teofilo Stevenson of Cuba, also three gold medals. Guillermo Rigandau should have had the chance to go for a third gold medal. He was not allowed when the Cuban government thought he was trying to defect. Otherwise, Teddy, he would be up there with the old, more than likely up there with the all-time greats. Oh, he had a very good chance not only to win a third gold medal, which would have put him in that very special class, but even go for a fourth and break the record of those three great fighters. Oliver Kirk, by the way. As you saw there from the United States, you're thinking, when did Oliver Kirk fight? Like, did I miss him? Was he was he with, uh, you know, was Michael Spinks or Spinks brother? Yeah, 1904. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> that is a couple years ago. There are some guys that, you know, on Olympic teams that didn't become big pros that were actually outstanding amateur fighters, uh, you know, even in 84 and 1976. And again, the Southport Johnson using his reach, using his height advantage, and... A fighter's style is a reflection of their soul, as far as I'm concerned. It tells you about their temperament. It tells you about what's inside of them. And you can see with Johnson, yeah, he has long arms. He's tall. But you could also see that he's careful. You could see that he's thoughtful. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that's not a reckless man. He's a guy that wants to do things scientifically, wants to do things technically in the right way. He's looking not to waste anything. He's looking for the right spots. Do you, Teddy, want to see more fire, or are you good with what you're seeing from him right now? Well, right now, tonight against Santos, it's okay. He's measuring Santos. He's keeping the fight in the geography that he needs to keep it. On the outside, where it gives him an advantage. And it gives him a chance to see Santos coming in, and a chance to use that uppercut, a chance to have room for Santos to make mistake. A chance for Johnson to have room to get those counter shots in, as Santos comes to him in such a slow, predictable fashion. But you're going to need to see more fire. You know, you're going to need to see other things from Johnson as he steps up that boxing ladder. Final minute of round four here, scheduled for eight. Junior middleweights, Udell Johnson, 28 years old, only 2-0 and as a professional, but an illustrious career as an amateur out of Cuba. Frankie Santos, 30 years old, out of Puerto Rico, fighting policemen. 
And again, Brian, you see Johnson's temperament. It's to be smart, it's to be careful, not to take risks. Defensively, he's pretty good. He's moving his head, he's making Santos miss when he needs to. And again, he doesn't want to waste much. He's looking for perfect spots to try to time Santos. Final seconds of round four back in Miami Beach after this. Round five here in Miami Beach. Udell Johnson out of Cuba against Frankie Santos of Puerto Rico. Brian Kenny, Teddy Atlas. Pleased to be with you for a special night of Friday Night Fights. Our uh, regular season, quote-unquote, will be back in January after the college football season here on ESPN2. But we get a few in here and there, Teddy, in what is our off-season. Yes, we do. Get you out of the gym with Pavetkin, your new heavyweight. Yeah, he's doing well. He's working very hard. He set up camp in New Jersey. So you broke camp and left Saul in charge? Yes, I left Saul. He didn't do the fight plan with me. You were nice enough to step in and fill those huge shoes and do the fight plan. <laughs> the I don't ring. quite have the hand speed of Saul, but you adjusted well. Yeah, you did okay. <laughs> and Saul is down in the camp looking after Povetkin. As I said, he's working very hard. He's been working on improving in certain areas, and he's got a great attitude. He's got a terrific character, I think, and um, most importantly, he understands what he needs to do to improve in certain areas. And the most important thing is he has the attitude of a fighter. And because of that, he's already had terrific success. He's won a gold medal in the 2004 Olympics, and uh, he's gotten himself to 17-0 with 15 knockouts and uh, a number one contendership position in the IBF. Just to let fans know, he doesn't have a fight signed right now, right, Teddy? Nothing, no. nothing lined up or signed right now. Nothing yet. He's yeah. the mandatory for Klitschko, and uh, we will be ready when the time comes. But in the meantime, we're using our time to uh, work on the things that we need to work on to secure the future. Vitaly Klitschko, Vladimir's brother, will fight next weekend at Staples Center against Chris Ariola. We get a chance to we'll talk about that fight, but uh, you're talking about Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir is the Ring Magazine heavyweight champion of the world. The Klitschko brothers rule supreme in the heavyweight division as of now. Final minute here of round five. That's, of course, before you got on the scene. We'll see your impact. Well, the most important thing is I can't have impact if I don't have somebody to impact. If I don't have somebody who's cooperative, somebody who has ability, somebody who has the proper intellect, and I believe Quebecan has those things. He is impactful. He has shown that before. And right now, Johnson trying to be impactful using his height. But again, what I said earlier that the style of a fighter gives you a peek into their soul, into what they are. It really does. When you saw Joe Frazier, you know what he was, you know, he came right at you throwing left hooks. He was a confident guy. He didn't waste time introducing himself. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and here you see a Johnson, not quite the same temperament, a guy who's very careful, very deliberate, and not quite as confident in those dimensions. Now, there's no smoke emitting from him. As Joe Frazier, smoking Joe. We're going to go to the corner of Udell Johnson. You know, Johnson is barely outlanding Santos right now. I don't know if Santos is taking a round, but, and we see some blood there from the right eye of Udell Johnson, as a matter of fact. Hadn't seen that before. Let's take a look at the previous rounds where it looks like Johnson is having some, you know, easy rounds with a sturdy opponent, but not a particularly gifted one. But again, Sometimes punch stats can throw you off. Sometimes they are quite indicative of the fight. And Johnson is barely outlanding Santos. He's landed the harder shots, and it's only been Santos that's been wobbled so far. Well, Johnson's been more accurate. He's been placing his shots. Didn't and see exactly how he got cut. And one thing you have to like about Johnson is he's fighting the fight in the areas that he needs to fight with his physical advantages, with his wingspan, with his height. He needs to fight on the outside, and for the most part, Johnson has made it that kind of fight. Didn't expect to see uh, Roberto Quesada, the cut man for Udell Johnson, get involved, but uh, he's involved there, as there is a small cut, it seems, and just a small trace of blood on the side of the right eye. Doesn't seem like it's going to change anything for Johnson. It's blood trickling into his eye. You know, we talked to Miguel Cotto here on Friday Night Fights. Brian Kenny and Teddy Atlas here in Miami Beach. And you can still see the scarring 
over Cotto's eyes and his eyebrows. He had a brutal cut in his last fight against Josh Clotty, and that really changed that fight. It's going to be fascinating to see what happens November 14th against Manny Pacquiao. Go ahead, Teddy. Give me 15 seconds on that. What do you think happens in that fight? You think about it now. Pacquiao, Cotto. I happen to believe that Cotto is a damaged fighter. Not so much physically, but emotionally, psychologically. And I think it showed in the Clotty fight. I think it showed a fighter that is not as sure of himself, does not as command of himself the same way, and was faltering in spots. Bef as he was before the Margarito fight, when he took a beating from a guy that may have had wrapped hands. I thought, gloves. Yeah, I, thought that, I thought that that damage from that beating was showing itself. I thought the ghosts of Margarito were kind of dancing in the brain of Cotto during that fight with Claudio. And now my question is, did that Claudio fight do enough for Cotto to get back? Did it do enough to get...